I had the opportunity when I was in law school to represent a young woman named Fauzia, who I think exemplifies both the legal change and the cultural change that can occur. Fauzia was 17 years old when she was forced to marry a 45-year-old man as his fourth wife, and as a condition of the union, she was to undergo female genital cutting. She narrowly escaped the procedure when her sister, just hours before, helped her escape the household. She made her way to the United States, where she sought asylum and was then placed in maximum security prison facilities with American convicted felons and in immigration detention facilities for almost two years while her case was being adjudicated. I had the opportunity as a law student to represent her. Fauzia's case ended up being appealed to the highest immigration appellate court, and there it received a lot of media attention. And there she won asylum. And her case ended up setting precedent in the United States with regard to whether or not someone can receive protection because of a form of gender-based persecution. Up until her case, our refugee laws did not recognize gender-based persecution as a form of protection. So she helped to change the law. But one day I was visiting her during the litigation of her case in prison. She was beaten down. She was tired emotionally and physically. She sat across from me in her prison uniform, nearly limp. Her body was bent from the weight of what she had endured. I asked her if she was OK. I knew she wasn't. And she looked at me and she said, you know, nothing will change anyway. And I said, what do you mean by that? And she said, well, here I've met other women like me, but women who didn't escape, women who were forced to undergo female genital cutting. And their mothers did it, and their mothers' mothers did it, and their mothers' mothers did it. And it's been going on for thousands of years, and what can I possibly do? But what happened in her case was very interesting. The press attention uh, caused a stir in her community. And some people were angry with her for speaking out and airing dirty laundry and maybe perpetuating stereotypes. Others were thrilled that she was finally talking about something that was secretive, but it was causing debate. A Washington Post reporter went to her village after her case was finally won and asked the village chief, what have you learned? And the village chief said, we've learned we have to cut girls younger. <laughs> then there was more debate and discussion. A few weeks later, a New York Times reporter came to the village, and she asked the village chief, what did you learn? And he said, I learned we cannot stop debate and discussion, and we've decided to stop the practice of female genital mutilation. <laughs> Fauzia had an impact, not only on the law, but on the transformation of her culture and her village. The incredible women around the world who do stand up for justice can, in fact, transform the planet.